far did you think the ECB went to try and tackle the climate change agenda? Good morning, Karen. Uh, thank you uh, for having me on the show. I think the ECB sort of uh, took a cautious step forward. I think they got it broadly right, um, because until now there's been sort of real sort of green negligence, um, and, and they have sort of worked that in um, into their framework. What I would have wished for is a little bit more pointers um, uh, on, on how they see what is the uh, transmission of climate change and the transition to a zero carbon economy to financial stability, to inflation. They speak about this rather fleetingly. I would expect that there will be a number of sort of uh, background papers coming out maybe before the Sintra conference. Uh, but by and large, I think they take a reasonable first step to integrate this. I think there can be no question that uh, this is in line with their secondary mandate to support the policy priorities of the European Union, because clearly combating climate change, uh, climate change um, is one of them. So um, there seems to be a lot of work in progress. They just put their marker there and say, okay, this is what we want to look at, but, but it's still pretty short of details on, on how they want to do it. Um, I think they've struck a fine and appropriate balance um, and they didn't get too carried away. Some people will be disappointed th saying they didn't go far enough, but I think that's, um, by and large, it's a reasonable, um, it's a reasonable first step. Maritza, I do agree, it is early days, and it's very complex. The more you dig into uh, what is going to take place behind the scenes for the central bank, you do see that there is this physical risk of floods and wildfires for some of the European countries, but also the transition risk, as you mentioned, for some of the corporates. But then what about the sovereigns? Because one of the points that you've raised is that there's a real difference in how corporates are going to be treated around their access to the bond scheme and what sort of green criteria they're going to have to clear. But what about the sovereign risk here? Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that's the big gap. And I'm, I'm zero surprised that they don't want to touch that. Uh, it's like a third rail of European politics. Um, so we need to, to remind ourselves that if you look at the balance sheet of the euro system, the ECB, it's more than 80% is government bonds. Um, less than 10% are corporate bonds. So much of the energy is being spent on trying to assess how uh, well on track are corporates uh, on the way to uh, net zero carbon uh, economy, uh, and they and they say they want to um, reweight and rebalance, maybe exclude some corporates from their collateral framework and and their their asset purchase program if they are not in line with uh, climate change policies. But of course, that totally neglects the fact that by far the biggest share is government. and it's of course the governments as well that have the, by far the biggest impact on whether economies at large will go towards carbon zero or not through regulation, through taxation and so on. So this whole most important um, asset class is not touched at all. And I'm not surprised because it's, 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 it, would be, it would take a very brave uh, ECB uh, governing council to say we're going to underweight Germany, for example, because they have such a high share of coal in power generation and will buy France instead, which has a more carbon neutral um, energy production. So I, I think this is clearly sort of a missing link here, and it's probably the most important step. Um, but I don't really expect that anything can be done. The political repercussions and reverberations are just too much for the ECB to stomach.